and praise the Lord. God bless you as you do. There's quite a few out today. I don't know if they're sick or what's going on, but keep the body lifted up in prayer, obviously. Turn with me in your Bibles or wherever you get your scriptures from, iPad, phone, whatever, to Psalm 125. Psalm 125th chapter. Y'all awake this morning? Yep. Praise God. All right. <laughs> Psalm 125, verse 1 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. I'm going to read that again. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. We as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ need to be those that he speaks of there that trust in the Lord that are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. As long as you live life on this earth, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be trials. There's going to be affliction. Don't go looking for it. I don't get up wondering what kind of trouble is going to come my way today, not a tribulator. But it's a fact of life that in this world we're going to have trouble. But Jesus said to rejoice because I've overcome the world. I know many of you have gone through it different times in life, different trials, troubles, all that kind of stuff. I've lost loved ones. Been there, done that as well. What's important, church, that we develop. Now, faith and trust is different. Faith, we're given a measure of faith. Or we wouldn't even be able to, quote, believe in God. And those who come to God, or if we're to please Him, we must believe that He exists Amen. and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Well, He gives us a measure of faith, and that faith develops and grows as we hear His Word and apply it to our life. Trust comes over time as well. He just yes. doesn't plop trust down into our spirit. Even in relationships with each other, trust is developed. I was sharing with an individual, they didn't have to be here today, but one time we were just talking, so I got on trust, and I said, when I first meet people, I don't fully trust them. I kind of got a funny look. I said, trust is developed over time. And it's a foolish person that just full on, gullibly, trusts anybody and everybody with everything. So it's like, trust develops over time. And it's the same way with our walk with the Lord. The more of his word that we get into us, the more we realize this isn't about religion. Can I get an amen on that? It isn't about religion. Amen. It's about a relationship with our living Savior, healer, deliverer, our best friend, our prince of peace, our joy giver. It's about a relationship. But we can and we need to develop an unshakable trust in the Lord that even when we don't understand and there will be times in your life, write it down, mark it down, that you're not going to understand why you're going through or might have just gone through what you're going through. Well, I want to be like Mount Zion, a mountain that I've got such an unshakable trust in the Lord that regardless of what happens to me, to my loved ones, to you, that our trust in the Lord does not change. And we can have that unshakable trust. As many of you know, and again, I'm not going to keep every week getting on it, and I haven't, but it's been five weeks basically since our grandson was born, lived 28 hours, and died. We're told through ultrasounds at 18 weeks, we're going to have some uh, genetic chromosome issues. We, they didn't, wouldn't know until he was born how severe and all that. Well, sadly, every negative thing that they said happened, and 28 hours later, we surrendered him to the Lord. But yet, this church as a body, us as a family, pray for months, decreeing, declaring, standing on God's word, believing, knowing that he is a healer. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He is a miracle worker. Yes. Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, what happens when you pray and believe and you stand on God's word and his promises, and it doesn't go the way that you believed in once? Are you going to waver in your faith? Are you going to waver in your trust? That's why we need that unshakable trust. I still trust my Savior and Lord. I trust that He is healer, that He is Savior, He is deliverer, He is miracle worker, but you didn't get what you want. The secret things belong to the Lord. He's God, I'm not. I just got to trust that Father 
truly does know best. And I love again that last song, I Surrender All. Doug already did that. I surrendered what I don't understand to him. Why? Because I have, I believe I have, and continuing to work on an unshakable trust in the Lord that come what may, I'm not going to waver in unbelief regarding the promises of God. But I'm going to continue to be fully persuaded that what God has promised, He's also able to perform. So I thank God for unshakable trust. I thank God that we're building up. He's building up a body of believers here, not doubters. A body of believers here that have an unshakable trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That come what may, I'm going to be like Mount Zion and I'm not going to be moved. Amen. What's that even mean, moved? Moved out of a place of faith. Moved out of a place of trust. See, every attack of the enemy that comes against you, it's trying to get you out of that place of faith. To get you out of that place where ultimately you just quit living for God. But when you stop believing that he's Savior, Healer, Deliverer, Provider, and all that, he's got you right where he wants you. Because I want to please God, and we can't please him without faith. So I refuse to be moved out of a place of faith and trust. Our faith church, our trust church, is not to be based and waver regarding our circumstances. Again, all the time with our rights, it hasn't changed the thing where our faith or our trust in God is concerned. Our faith and our trust is based on His Word and the promises of His Word. And again, I'm a faith preacher. I believe all in faith and all that. But how about going to, because some people right away, well, you just didn't have enough faith. There was a lack of faith in some area. That's hogwash. And I'm a faith preacher. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. It talks about all those that by faith received this, that, and all the other. But also talks about those that believed but did not receive the promise in this life. There's two separate verses that reference that. They believed. They had faith but didn't receive in this life. I believe a lack of faith can be a big thing where it's not receiving. So I'm not downplaying that. We need faith in God. We need to get an agreement and have the faith of God, the beliefs of God. But just because something doesn't go your way, just because you lose that job or lose that home or lose that loved one, doesn't necessarily mean it was a faith issue. You find where your faith and your trust is at, how you handle it. You know, often people use Psalm 23 at funerals. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me and all that. Love it. But the part I hone in on is though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's because of our unshakable faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that we're going through it. Yes. Didn't keep us from death, but it's what's going to bring us through it. Yes. And I encourage you today, Firehouse, regardless of what you're going through now or may in the future, you can develop unshakable faith and unshakable trust in the Lord Jesus Christ where you're not moved out of trusting Him. You're not moved out of faith in Him regardless of what you go through. Amen. So I'm going to share some things with you concerning trusting the Lord today. Again, as we know, it rains on the just and the unjust. Yes, it does. I said it rains on the just yes. and the unjust. The storms of life will come to us all. But what's your foundation on? Is it on sand or is it on the rock? That's right. Those with unshakable trust, it's on the rock. And the winds may blow, the storms may come, but I'm not going to be moved yes. out of that faith, place of faith or trust in the Lord. Charlotte quoted part of it in her prayer this morning, but turn with me, and I know a lot of you could quote it, but turn with me to Proverbs 3. I want to break down a few things in this verse. Again, our key verse was the first one I read, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. This is in part how we get that unshakable trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Right there, verse 1, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Half-hearted trust isn't going to get it. Half-hearted anything with the Lord isn't going to get it. We need to trust in the Lord, church, with all of our heart if we're going to get that unshakable and have unshakable trust. And notice it's trust in the Lord. Yes, we need, we ought to be able, should be able to trust in one another, but my ultimate trust is in the Lord. Yes. 
If you've lived on this earth any length of time, man will let you down. Man will fail you. Give it enough time, sad to say, I'll probably let you down. I'll probably fail you at some point in time. I'm not up here in some, you know, glory cloud, untouchable, and no, I'm perfect in all my ways. No, there's only one, and that's him. We're striving towards perfection, maturity. But our trust needs to be in the Lord. It's sad to say, yes, many behind the pulpit have blown it, have missed it, adultery, all that kind of stuff. And those that are following them, if their eyes are on them and their full trust was in them instead of the God that called them, they fall by the wayside. I don't care how many walk away from preaching this gospel. How many fall away? My trust isn't in you. My trust isn't in man. My trust is in God. Amen. So I trust in the Lord with all my heart. Amen. And there's benefits from trusting in the Lord. Amen. You can just write these down. You don't have to turn to them. But Proverbs 16, 20 says, He who heeds the word wisely. That's a good lead in for this message. He who heeds the word wisely will find good and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Amen. You want happiness? Trust in the Lord. Yeah. You put all your trust in man, man, happiness will win and out and up and down and all that. No, but as we trust in the Lord and his word, we'll be happy. We'll be blessed. That's right. The word blessed means to be made happy. One definition of it. Proverbs 28, 25 says, He who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. How many of you want to prosper? Yeah. Not just financially, but that's a big part of it. But in every area of life, you've got to trust in the Lord. Amen. Seek first the kingdom and, kingdom and righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches. So I trust in Him for my prosperity, for my provision, for every need to be supplied. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. My trust isn't in man. My trust is in the Lord. And I believe he's my protector. He's my defender. Regardless of what goes on in this world. That's right. Proverbs 28, 26 says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. But whoever walks wisely will be delivered. We need to trust in the Lord. The Bible says our hearts are deceitful above all things. Our trust needs to be in the Lord, church. You may say, well, this is elementary. Well, we need the foundation. We need the basics. It's sad to say too many don't. Well, they don't even quote Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But are you really doing it? We can tell oftentimes by the words that come out of our mouth. By our actions, by us thinking, well, I trust. And that word trust, I meant to share that with you earlier, means fully rely on. If we trust in the Lord, that means we fully rely on. Yes, there's things that we need to do. Faith without works is dead. It isn't just all on Him. But in our trusting in the Lord, yes, we do what we're supposed to do in our walk and our relationship with Him. But He doesn't need our help to make everything happen and to fix stuff. Well, I trust you, Lord, in this, but... Then you start meddling in it and you make more of a mess with it. Yeah, that's right. What we need to be doing is what he tells us to do. Obedience leads us to do by his spirit. Word advises us, advises us to do. But otherwise, if we think we can help him fix stuff and make it happen, that's not fully trusting in him. Right. Every time Jerry's tried to help God out, didn't go so well. But when Jerry backs off, when the Lord has said, I'll handle this. And I just back off and let him handle it. He handles it. Glory oh, to God. Thank God. So we need to trust in the Lord, not our own heart. That verse goes on to say, and I know this is probably the challenge for many of us, and I included us. Lean not on your own understanding. Stop trying to if you're to develop unshakable trust in the Lord, you can't lean on your own understanding. Oh. You'll never figure it all out. If I wanted to, quote, stay in a place of grief with the loss of our grandson, that's what I do right there. Try to lean on my own understanding, trying to figure it out. Why, God, we prayed, we did this, we did that, da, 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 da. All I do is keep me, keep us right. in a place of confusion. Get us in full-on depression and just all messed up. Well, I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm not going to try to figure it out. Yeah. I will be <coughs> not going to understand everything. 
Man's wisdom is foolishness to God. Right. His ways are higher than our ways. I already quoted Jeremiah 17, 9, even though I didn't give you the text, but it says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Quit leaning on your own understanding. Quit trying to figure things out. Why God? Why God? Why God? Yeah, there are some things he may give you the answer, but again, he's God, you're not. Charlotte has shared how, I forget what it was going through, and she's crying out to the Lord for it, and he flat out said, I'm not going to give you the answer to everything. You need to get that settled in your heart. And again, that's where trust comes in. All right, Father, I just trust you in it. I don't understand, but I trust you, and I'm not going to lean on my understanding. Own understanding. Proverbs, the second chapter, verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. You want understanding? You seek him for it. You don't lean on your own. Amen. James says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He'll give generously. There's no shortage of wisdom in heaven. Amen. But too many times we'll go run into man for wisdom, for understanding, for answers, and man ain't got it. Yes, we got some wisdom, and we can counsel and give some understanding and all that, but again, I don't have all the answers. Many tragedies in life that people go through, we may have some understanding. I do understand that school shootings, it isn't a gun issue. The shooting part is, but it's a heart issue. All this mess going on, it's a heart issue. I saw this cool quote. Yeah, I'll get a little political. But I saw this quote. When a drunk driver kills somebody, they don't blame the car. Yeah. When a bomber sets off a bomb, they don't blame the bomb, they blame the bomber. Then when there's a shooter, why do they blame the gun? And we need more gun control. Again, those that are sick in their head or those that don't give a rip about the law, whether it's a gun or whatever, they're going to find a weapon to do the damage that they want to do regardless. Yes, I believe there needs to be regulations and there needs to be licensing and all that kind of stuff. But I know at least three of the states that have the strictest gun control in this nation have the highest death rate and shooting rates and crime rates and all that. And then you got all the gun-free zones, schools, a lot of movie theaters, all that. That's where it takes place. The bottom line, it's a heart issue. The schools kick Jesus out, and then you wonder why Satan's full-on come in. But we need to trust in the Lord, church. And get wisdom and knowledge and understanding from him. Proverbs 3.13 says, here's happy again. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. But again, when it's talking about wisdom and understanding, it's not talking about man's wisdom. And us leaning on our own understanding is getting his wisdom and his understanding. I love Philippians 4, 6, and 7. You can turn with me there. I know many of you are familiar with it. Powerful verse. Verse is. <laughs> Philippians or Philippians? <laughs> Philippians. <laughs> Four. Verse six. Says be anxious <coughs> for a few things. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing, no thing, nada, zero. But in everything, notice the extremes. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And guess what? When we do that, and the peace of God, notice whose peace it is. See, we can have, quote, temporary peace or Man's peace, circumstance peace, but it's the peace of God that will keep us. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding yes, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yes, I want God's peace. I want the peace of God. But if I'm leaning on my own understanding trying to figure things out, I'm not going to have it. But when I cast my cares on him, when I again determine I'm not going to worry about this, I'm not going to be anxious but with this, but I'm going to bring it to you, Lord, in prayer and supplication. Again, with thanksgiving. That's when the peace of God will invade the scene. Because again, I shared 
Went a couple times, but I think it was a Saturday. Uh, Jace went home to be with the Lord Thursday night. On a Thursday, that Saturday, I was here laying on a couch. We had a different one then, but laying on a couch back there. Just put some worship music on my phone, lifted hands up to the Lord, tears in my eyes. I said, I don't understand. We prayed, we believed, but Lord, I love you. I trust you. I praise you. I worship you. And I need your peace. I need your strength. I didn't say I need your understanding and I need answers. Been doing this too long, and if he wants to give them to me, he will. But it's just, I trust you. And I worship you. And I felt the peace of God come upon me. Amen. And again, that Sunday driving here, I had both Rick and Sally offer, hey, if you need the day off, we'll minister for you. Da, da, da. And it's like, no, it's healing for me. Yeah. I need to <laughs> preach. On the way here, driving in the car at that point, man, I was just, I was wavering at that point. Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I need you. I need you. You know, and all that. In the middle of worship, got out of my flesh. To start worshiping, praising Him, and just like a cloak yeah. or a coat, the presence and the anointing of God came upon me. And I was able to get here in the middle of that grief, but with a peace that passes all understanding because I refused to lean on my own understanding, chose to trust in the Lord with all of my heart, was able to get up here and continuing to get up here, preach the word of faith, preach the uncompromised word of God, minister out of our own grief, if you will. And still preach and minister to others. And I've said multiple times, the Lord ain't getting nothing out of this. He got no victory. Jace gained. Yeah, we have a loss, but Jace gained. He's healed whole presence of God. We'll be reunited with him. So the devil gets nothing out of this. If he thinks for a second, I've got shakable faith, shakable trust in the Lord, and I'm going to be moved out of the place of faith, he's got another thing coming. Still going to lay hands on the stick. Still going to believe God for signs, wonders, healings and miracles. I've seen too much yes. over my life. See too much in the word of God and continue to stand. Refuse to be moved. Determined to be like Mount Zion with that unshakable trust and faith in the Lord. Glory to God. So if we're to have unshakable trust, that trust needs to be in the Lord. You've got to stop leaning on your own understanding. The third part says, in all your ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge him what? That he is king of kings and lord of lords. He is savior, healer, deliverer, prince of peace, joy giver. My rock, my refuge, my fortress, my strength. Very present help in time of trouble. The Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. You say that. The Lord is good. See, the devil wants you focusing on the negative that happens in your life. Well, if God was there, then, uh, yeah, God was there. Thank you. Right. He was a very present help. He was there when we held Jason in our arms and surrendered him to the Lord. Yeah. And I love it. And I forgot it. Charlotte was sharing with her brother. He's up from Florida. Was sharing with him or somebody thinking it was him. <laughs> but his whole name and all that, the Lord spoke to her loud and clear and said, death is not taking him. This is going to mess with you. With all the death isn't taking him, and there will be no sting in this death because you've released, you're releasing him to me. Yes. Amen. Now again, that may take a while to sink into some. Yes, he died. But he basically passed from this life, having no life, for all intents and purposes, into the hands of his loving father. But he said, death has not taken him. You've released him to me. Because when I was praying over God, you're a miracle worker. You're more than able to heal him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. But if that's not your plan at this point, we release him to you. Amen. And that's what we did. Yes, there's still pain and all that. But that sting, if you will, there's no poison in it. That's right. It's not taking us out. Not wavering again in unbelief regarding the promises of God. We've got unshakable trust and faith in the Lord. And I want to raise up a body of believers. God told me years ago, my assignment is to teach you, God's people, how to overcome. Amen. Well, guess what? If you're going to be overcomers more than conquerors, there's things you're going to have to overcome. That's right. Amen. There's things you're going to have to conquer. Amen. Thank God for all that Jesus already conquered. And he's given us his authority and power to overcome. But in all your ways acknowledge him. Isaiah 33 and 13 says, Hear you who are far off what I have done, and you who are near, acknowledge my might. Acknowledge his might. Acknowledge he is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. Again, he is the almighty God. There is no God like Jehovah. That's it. There's no one that can meet your needs like he can. There's no one that can heal you like he can, set you free 
like he can. Deliver you like he can. Bless you like he can. One split second. He can just rescue you right out of whatever it is. Well, why don't he? Maybe he's wanting you to develop that unshakable trust and faith in him. Yet if we got everything we want, when we want it, how we wanted it, we'd be like, thank you. Those poor kids you see today. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the message, but those you can see it on some news sites and I shared on my Facebook wall. A teacher of the year in Florida went and posted this blog thing or whatever you want to call it, and it's spreading. And I reposted it. Charlotte's been in Christian, and she's secular, Christian daycare and school for 28 years. Yeah. And much of what this lady addressed and said, she's dealt with. And most of it, it's the parents. Yeah. Yep. This lady talked about parents cussing her out, sending her to hell, basically. My child, da, 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 da. my kid wouldn't do this. The lack of support in the home from parents and all that. And then they wonder why we have the school shootings, why these kids are all messed up. And again, she teaches at a Christian school and will have the same thing from parents. Well, Johnny wouldn't do that. Da, 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 da. God anger, God saw her face with that stupid stuff. Well, that article was a perfect mirror, but that was a public school. Sad fact is, in a Christian school, the lack of support from parents. Mm -hmm. It's just another word to them. Yeah. That was free. Had nothing to do with the message. Yeah. <laughs> but we need to acknowledge him. Again, we acknowledge he's all-knowing. That he's all-powerful. He sees all. He knows all. Again, I keep saying, he's God, we're not. Amen. Some of you may be reminded of that. Mm -hmm. He's God, you're not. If you're to develop unshakable trust in him, it comes from getting into his word and getting his word into you. As you learn the character of God. That's how I come to a place in relationships with people here. I learn your character. I learn if, you know, Eddie says, I'm going to be here at 10 o'clock and I'm going to help you move this or whatever. And he shows up. I know I can trust him in that. But if I'm sitting here at 1030, 1045, and I'm just using an example, and that hasn't happened. Oh, hey, hey. 11 o'clock, I'm still sitting here. I'm going to learn something about his character. I don't know if I can trust him. It's funny, different things like, you know, sell online. I ended up moving to my office, but one of the older couches got some stains on it and all that. Was listed it on the Facebook marketplace. Had a few people. Had one yesterday. Was supposed to meet me here to buy it. He never showed up. I know I can't quote trust that person. But when we know and understand God's character, we know we can trust him. I know God is faithful. I know God is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. So I know I can trust him. And as we learn of each other's character, we learn whether we can trust or not. When Greg says, I'm going to take you out to dinner, prime rib, whatever you want, and I get all excited. And then, again, just funny example. He hasn't done that. <laughs> but then we get in the car and we pull into White Castle. <laughs> and I'm expecting prime rib. I'm learning something. Well, I don't like trust Greg when he says he's taking me out for prime rib and he's giving me White Castle. I was at least taking you to Taco Bell. More like oh, like, thank you. More like prime <laughs> rib. End results the same in both places. <laughs> As you learn the character of God and gain wisdom and understanding from him, you learn not to lean on your own understanding. You learn to look to him, and you will develop unshakable trust. One of my favorite Bible characters, some may think he was a character, but it's Paul the Apostle. Acts the 20th chapter, he's talking about how the Holy Spirit warned him that nothing but chains and persecution and trouble awaited him, but he said, but none of these things move me. Amen. That's unshakable trust, church. That's unshakable faith, if you will. None of these things move me. That's where I want to be at. That's where I want you to be at. Amen. It may not be chains and persecution. Amen. It could be attacks and sickness, disease, relationship issues, financial challenges and all that. But we need to get to that point that none of these things move me. Yes, right. amen. Yes, yes. And this part is how you do it. The rest of that verse is with Acts 20, 24. Again, where you start out, none of these things move me. He says, nor do I count my life dear to myself. So that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Hallelujah. How did none of those things move me? Because he didn't count his life so dear to himself. 
So that's even, and again, I'm not downplaying again, those of us that have lost loved ones. It hurts. It's painful. But too many times we focus too much on this temporary life. Life's only a season. It's a blurp, if you will, in all of eternity. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but it's the word of God, church, that stands forever. Amen. When we count our life too dear and everything that happens to us and we get all upset about it, that's when we try to lean on our own understanding or put trust in others. And we stop acknowledge him in all of our ways. Well, I acknowledge you, brother. Rick. Well, are you acknowledging the God in him? We've got to develop that unshakable trust and faith in God. Paul was stoned, left for dead, shipwrecked, snake bit, put in prison. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'll read that again. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. When you get to that point where you're there, movable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in Him, that's the key. If you're just doing what you want to do, off half cocked and all that, well, it's most likely going to be in vain. I don't want anything I do in life or this ministry to be in vain. I want it to be, quote, spirit led. I want the anointing of God on it. I want his grace to be sufficient Hallelujah. despite what comes against us. But we've got to develop that unshakable trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, it comes as we get into this word. As we get this word into us, get convinced that his promises are true. Yeah, well, you believe God and it didn't happen the way you want it. I've still got an unshakable trust in the Lord that he knows what I don't know. He sees what I didn't see. And again, especially where loved ones are concerned, if they were suffering with sickness, disease, cancer, all that kind of stuff, yeah, I always pray, believe God for healing miracle. But if it doesn't come in their life and they're in heaven, well, they got spared from a whole lot. Where pain, sickness, disease is concerned, and they get spared from a whole lot of garbage that's going on in this world. Again, I don't know how much longer this world can go on the way that it is. That's right. But regardless of how long we're here, I'm determined to have unshakable trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not, and just because my grandkids go to Christian school doesn't mean squat. But I don't send them off there in fear. Charlotte works in the front office. Some psycho was to break in coming there. She's the first one they'd see. We don't sit there and live in fear. We have unshakable trust and faith in God. That he's watching over and he's protecting her. He's giving them wisdom. It's the same way in your life. We can't live our life, church, regardless of what goes on in this world, in fear. Amen. We've got to trust in the Lord. We've got to develop that unshakable trust in the Lord. Just because company after company shuts down, and thank God more of them are coming back, and markets changing and all that. But just because there's a threat, or you may lose your job. You need to have unshakable trust in the Lord that he is your provider, that he will make every provision to be seen, yeah. that you are in covenant and in partnership with him. He's my provider. Even as a pastor, he's my provider. You're not. Yeah. Firehouse Church isn't your resource, but he's the source. Yeah. Your job is not your source. He's your source. Yeah. Job's the resource. Yeah. It's all funneled from him. That's right. So I'm in covenant with him. My unshakable trust and faith where our finances, this church concerned, is in Him, not man. It's the same way. So regardless of whatever happens with the stock market or in this world, I have unshakable trust and faith in Him that He's going to take care of us Amen. and that He'll take care of you. And I can have all the, quote, unshakable trust there is, but it isn't enough just for me to have it for you. You need to develop it yourself. There you go. So I encourage you and I challenge you, heed this word. Get into God's word. Get God's word into you. The promises of God into you. Trust and get to that place where you do trust in the Lord with all of your heart. No, it doesn't happen overnight. Been living for God 35, 36 years. So it's been a process. But I am where I am today because over the period of time, despite troubles we've gone through, that wasn't the first loss, losses that we've gone through, we continue to stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ that he is everything he said that he is, that he will be to us, everything he said he'll be to us. And we do trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We've determined 
We're not going to lean on our own understanding. And again, I know that's probably one of the hardest ones, but you've got to get to that place. You're not going to understand everything. You're not going to be able to figure everything out. And if you think you're ever going to figure the one sitting next to you out, you can forget that one too. <laughs> Every time I think I've seen it all with somebody or an individual, I'm not talking about anything here. I hear something else or see something else and I'm just like, what? 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 See where people are concerned. Stop leaning in your own understanding. Right. Let God fix them. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> Sometimes it's the whole iron sharpen iron thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Too. But in all of our ways, church, we need to acknowledge him as well. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So I praise God for the unshakable trust that he makes available to each and every one of us. Despite what situation, circumstance you may be going through, I want to encourage you and challenge you today. I'm only standing here today after what we've recently gone through because of our unshakable trust and faith in him. Yeah. That he is our rock, our refuge, our fortress, our strength. Yes, those are scriptures. I don't just spew them out, if you will, because it's a cool thing to do. I believe what I'm preaching to you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Even in places of pain and grief, and again, at different times, there's been waves of it where it'll just hit you out of the blue. Again, I just worship him, yes. and I begin to praise him, thanking him for all that he is, all that he's done, and will continue to do in our life. Don't focus on the losses. Don't focus on all the negatives. I focus on the promises. I focus on the answers that we've already seen. Healings that have already took place. Breakthroughs that have already taken place. See, the enemy wants all of us to get focused on the negative. Focused on the mountain standing before us. Well, we need to be the mountain and have that unshakable trust and faith in God. Again, regardless of what comes my way, I'm not going to be moved out of a place of faith and trust in the Lord. Because he truly is your answer, church. Stand your feet with me. I'll close this out in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word that it's anointed, that it's powerful. I thank you that, yes, there are times that you're anoint, your word is to correct, to rebuke. But your word is to encourage as well. Your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I thank you for feeding us, our spirit man today, through your word and from your word, Lord. And I just pray for each and every one that's here today that has heard this word, that faith will rise up within them. That regardless of what they may be going through right now, those that again walk through this with us, and maybe they are somewhat shaken in their faith or their trust. Lord, let them... Ultimately, yes, look to you, but see us as their leaders as an example that we're not going to waver regarding the promises of God. We're not going to get shakable where our trust is concerned, but we're going to continue to stand on your word and that you are a faithful God, a merciful God, and everything that your word says about you. And Lord, I pray for each and every one that's here, Lord, that we do what we need to do to get full of your word, God, to realize this isn't about religion, but it's about a relationship that we come to know your character all that you are, Lord, all that your word says you are, and that we come to that place that we have unshakable trust and faith in you, Lord, that regardless of what comes against us, regardless of any trouble or trial, we know, Lord, that you will always lead us into victory. You've said in your word that we're more than conquerors through you who loves us. You've said in your word that no weapon formed against us will prosper, that no tongue that rises against us in judgment shall stand. So, Lord, we stand on your word. We don't focus on the mountain before us. We don't focus on the problem or the trial. We focus on the mountain mover. We focus on the one that is the answer despite questions that we may have. I thank you, Father, for moving mightily in each and every one of our lives. We continue to lift up those that may need healing in their body. You are the healer, Jesus. You are the one that forgives us of all of our sins and heals us of all of our diseases. We just continue to rebuke and to resist all sickness disease, pain, sinus issues, flu. Flu has got to bow to the name of Jesus. Yeah. Flu is not above the name of Jesus. So we just rebuke all flu yeah. in any of our lives, in any of our family members. We declare your word and no plague will come near our dwelling. So we rebuke all sickness, disease, and pain. I thank you for even now your healing power to flow from the front to the back of this room, touching, healing, each and every one that may need it, command all pain to go in the name of Jesus. Continue to lift up Jenny, Lord. We thank you yes. for what medical science and surgeons can do. But we thank you, God, for relieving the pain, God, from that surgery. We thank you for quick recovery 
in Jesus' name. And for any others that may be home today, sick in body, just let your healing power touch them now and raise them up whole, healthy, and complete. We thank you, Father, for continuing to move mightily in each and every one of our lives and in this place. We continue to declare, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is your will that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And we are a body, Lord, that's prospering because we're getting your word into us and allowing your word and your spirit to transform yeah. our hearts and lives. Father, I thank you that we are blessed. Say we are blessed. Amen. We're blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. We are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Everything, everything, everything we set our hand to prospers. Thank you, Father, that you never leave us nor forsake us, but you are with us always. Thank you, Father, for continuing to lead, guide, guard our every step. And Lord, just by way of your Holy Spirit, help each and every one of us come to that place that we are like Mount Zion, that we're not moved, we're not shaken, regardless of what comes against us. Help us to fully trust in you, Lord, with all of our heart, to come to that place where we don't lean on our own understanding, but we do acknowledge you in all of our ways, knowing that as we do, you will direct our path. I thank you that according to your word, whether we turn to the left or to the right, our ears will hear your voice behind us saying, this is the way. Walk in it. We are your sheep and we know your voice. I thank you for continuing to speak clearly and precisely to each and every one of us, Lord. Giving us the wisdom that we need. Giving us the understanding that you want us to have. And we just thank you and we praise you for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're here today and you need specific prayer for something, maybe there is an area you're struggling with and you need us to get in agreement with you for a healing, a breakthrough, some wisdom, whatever it is. Maybe you're, you've suffered a loss and struggling with grief or lack of peace or whatever. Love to pray with you and for you. Otherwise, just greet one another, bless one another. Again, got some pastries back there. Whatever is left, I guess we're going home to feed some birds or something. <laughs> Help yourself to those on your way out, but just love on one another.